Hi, I'm Andrew Pierce with Epics at Purdue, and in this module we're going to talk about the course structure of the Epics classes here at Purdue University. So the first thing to know if you're a student at Purdue enrolled in Epics is whether you're a one credit hour student or a two credit hour student, and that all depends on how you registered in the course. If you're a one credit or two credit hour student, you'll have a two hour lab session somewhere on your schedule and that is pertaining to the team that you are working with. So if you look in your schedule and you find you're meeting Wednesday at 1.30, that'll let you know which lab section you're working with. In addition to that two hour lab section, if you're a one credit hour student, you're expected to work about three and a half hours per week outside of lab on average. Some weeks will be busier and some weeks will be less busy, but we're looking for evidence in your notebook of contributions and work toward your project of about three and a half hours per week outside of lab on top of the two hours you spend in lab. Um, so that sets the basic expectation there. And then in addition to that, we have something called professional development hours or PDHs. This is what we used to call lecture credits. And those are intended to help augment your learning in the lab by giving you skills you need in order to be successful. Now, if you're a two credit hour student, the expectations are a little bit higher. You still have that two hour lab session but instead of three and a half hours on average of work outside of lab, we expect around five hours a week outside of lab. Again, you won't be clocking in and out to do that. We're just looking for that evidence of accomplishments in progress that would equal about five hours a week outside of lab. And then instead of five PDHs, we're looking for 10. That's the basic difference between a one and two credit hour student. Now, focusing on the last bit of that, the professional development hours, there are some differences based on if you're a one credit hour and two credit hour student, and whether you're a first time EPIC student or a returning student. And this can be a point of confusion. So you'll wanna pay attention to this table and also go and look at the lecture option schedule so that you can understand what's available to you as a student in EPICS. So if we look at the top left quadrant for a first time one credit hour student, it says you need to do a five PDH required series. And that series is required for all first time EPIC students it's this module that you're doing now, the Introduction to Epics module, three lectures on the design process, so you'll learn the basics of doing design work, and one on ethics and community partner relationships. We really wanna help you develop the ability to work with other people in the community so that you can be respectful and ethical in the way you um, approach them. Now, if you're a returning student, there's a little bit more flexibility. You'll have the first lecture similar to this one, which is the What's New lecture, and then you'll have four additional PDHs of your choosing. And those additional PDHs can come from a number of different places. And if you're a two credit hour student, you'll do the what's new lecture and nine additional. So on either case, as a first time student or returning student, you'll have to get five PDHs. And as a two credit hour student, you'll need 10, but which five and 10 you do are a little bit different depending. So one of the options you have for getting those PDHs is to do skill sessions. And skill sessions are a really cool way to learn new skills. So they cover a variety of topics that we want you to be effective um, quickly on so that you can get to work on your project. These aren't going to be a deep dive like a full semester course, but they'll give you the basics so that you know just enough to ask the right questions to be successful. These can cover a variety of topics such as computer aided design or software development, things that are really technical or more professional skills like custom interactions or project management. And each of these is built into a series of at least two parts. So you would have computer aided design one, two, three, for instance, and those build upon one another to increase the complexity so that you get a little bit more than a one hour splash into that topic. You really get some um, useful knowledge. Some other options that you have for getting your PDHs are our leadership series, which is an eight PDH series that'll cover most of you through the semester. Um, and that is four guest speakers we bring in from all over campus, industry, and government to come give talks about how to be an effective leader on a team. We have an entrepreneurship series, which is guest speakers from the Burton Morgan Center that come and give lectures on how to go about commercializing or choosing to commercialize your product. Um, we have a number of online modules and tape lectures on our YouTube channel, and also advisor approved activities can be used for really anything on campus that you think would be useful toward your project, but isn't a part of your regular project work. So those are some of the great examples you have. Um, in addition to the PDHs, we talked about your two hour lab session. 
This is going to be led by the project manager for the team, which would be a student leader on the team who's going to really help guide what everyone in the team is going to be doing. You'll sit down, you'll share your progress issues and goals in, of that week. So you talk about what did you get done, what came up that caused some trouble, and what are you hoping to get done in the next week. And you'll set plans for that week as a team. You'll try and get some work and progress done, but a lot of that meeting is setting expectations and sharing what you're doing with other people. And that's why you really have to get the work done outside of the lab session. Some things to expect in your first lab meeting. You should meet all of your new team members. It's important to get to know each other. You may do some nice breaker or something like that to get to know the people you're working with. Um, there should be an overview of what are the returning projects that are in progress and what are the new projects that are going to be coming onto the team or the new challenges that you might have to solve. There should be some determination of team assignments. Some advisors do this later in the semester and some do it up front in the first week. Um, you'll determine your team roles. Likewise, the team roles are sometimes determined in the first week and sometimes later. Um, that's up to your advisor. But the quicker you can get onto a project team and know your role, the quicker you can be productive. Hopefully you'll plan during that first week a trip to meet the project partner or at least have someone contact the project partner to set that up. It's very important that you work closely with your project partners in order to be successful. You'll need to check your login into the Epix Computer Lab and into My Epix. Make sure that you're in the system so that you don't have any trouble getting things done. We'll ask you to swipe your ID card, your Purdue ID, in our doors. We have all of your ID numbers, but there is a 11th digit on your ID that is variable that the door systems don't register automatically. So we'll ask you to swipe those ID cards and you'll get a lab tour so you'll see what all the facilities available to you are. So talking a little bit more about the roles on a team, first of all, what to expect from your advisor and TA. So your advisor um, will be there to meet with you and during the lab time and help guide your progress. They're there as technical and managerial support for the team. So they're not there to lead the team. They won't replace the project manager. They're not there to tell you what to do or to give you the answers because they don't know. This is real design. There isn't a straightforward right answer. They're really there for coaching of the students. So if you need professional advice or guidance or leadership, whether in your EPICS team or outside of it, your advisor and TA are there to help you. Your advisor is ultimately responsible for your grading and the TA will do a lot of the help for them preparing that. So if you have questions or um, need to talk about your grades, those are the people to talk to. And also we have 10 TAs or more in EPICS every semester and a number of advisors from all the teams. And they are a talent pool for you to tap. So go to their office hours, go to their skill sessions, talk to the TAs and ask for assistance. And if your TA doesn't know how to do something, they can get you in contact with the other TAs that might know how. So make use of that talent pool. So what are some of the roles for students? We said there were a number of leadership roles. So the first one is that project manager. And they're really the overall lead for the team. So while we see the advisor and TA as coaches for the team, the project manager is sort of the quarterback on the field. They really should be leading the overall effort for the team. Underneath the project manager, you'll have design leads. So on a given team, you may have three or four projects, and each of those has a design lead. The design lead is really in charge of making the key technical decisions and helping to organize that project team. In addition to that, you'll have a project partner liaison, and that person's responsibility is to communicate questions the team has with the community partner, help set up community partner visits, and those types of things. We don't want eight or ten different students writing emails to the community partner every week, so try and use that project partner liaison as the main point of contact. Each team will have a financial officer who will control the budget for the team. In order to do real projects, you have to spend real money, so that financial officer is in charge of that. You'll have a webmaster for the team. Each team has a website that they keep up to communicate what you're doing to the outside world and a project archivist. The project archivist's job is to make sure that all the documentation is complete for the project so that design reviewers who come in can understand it and so that the next semester's team can understand what you did and pick it up where they left off. Now the project archivist's job is not to do all of the paperwork for the team. Their job is just to be responsible for making sure that it's complete and well organized and easy to read. So the structure or hierarchy for the team, you have that project manager, and each of the design leads reports to the project manager, with the TA and the advisor there to help in an advisory capacity. So usually during a team meeting, the project manager will call everyone to order, 
and they'll go through the design leads and ask them to report on the progress issues and goals of their project during that week. So in summary on the course structure, all team members will meet in their weekly lab. Um, you'll need to work outside of that lab time to be successful. That's simply not enough time to get everything you need to do done for your project. You must complete the required five or 10 PDHs depending on if you're a one or two credit hour student. Please make sure you get those taken care of. A lot of students wait until the last couple of weeks when they have exams and other things pulling at them and try and do all five or all 10 then. That's a bad idea. And there are leadership opportunities and abundance in Epic. So take use of those, try and make the most of the experience that you have here.